It's logical and intelligent to believe in a creator and in a young earth creation. I debated Ken Miller on the radio once. He wrote this book. He writes, he's a professor in biology at, uh, in Rhode Island at Brown University. He said, evolution is controversial in certain circles. And some people wonder why biologists insist on teaching it. The answer is simple. Evolution is the most powerful statement ever made about living things. No, evolution is the most silly statement ever made about living things. Had to be designed. Evolution is not a fact. It doesn't even qualify as a theory. It's a not even a hypothesis. It's a metaphysical research program. It's not testable science, Karl Popper said. Julian Huxley, Thomas Huxley's grandson, said, I suppose the reason why we leapt at the or origin of species was the idea of God interfered with our sexual mores. Oh, now we're getting to the truth. Some people don't want God telling them what to do. That's the bottom line. Professor Ruse said, evolution is promulgated by its practitioners as more than mere science. Evolution is promulgated as an ideology, a secular religion. He said, I am an ardent evolutionist and an ex-Christian. But I must admit that this, and this one complaint, and Mr. Gish is one of many to make it, the literalists are absolutely right. Evolution is a religion. This was true of evolution in the beginning, and it's true of evolution today. Arthur Keith said, evolution is unproved and unprovable. We believe it because the only alternative is special creation, and that is unthinkable. We don't want to think that maybe there might have been a creator. I agree with this guy. He said, evolution is a fairy tale for grown-ups. The theory has helped nothing in the progress of science. It's useless. Muggeridge said, I'm convinced the theory of evolution will be one of the great jokes in the history books of the future. Tell you what, folks, it is a joke. It is silly, but it's effective. And Satan's been using this since the Garden of Eden when he said to Eve, ye shall be as gods. That's what evolution's all about. You can evolve and progress and improve to godhood. It's rejecting the Creator and putting man in his place. The devil is a liar. He doesn't want you to go to heaven. These scientists that go around, go around teaching evolution are great con men. The story they are teaching may be the greatest hoax ever. In explaining evolution, we do not have one iota effect. Fred Hoyle said, the only way life could get here is by a superintelligence, having put it here. And then he turns around and said, see, this proves life came from outer space. <laughs> jump, frog, jump. <laughs> Pierre de Chardin, one of the guys responsible for the Piltdown hoax, said, evolution is a postulate to which all theories, all hypotheses must henceforth bow in order to be thinkable and true. Evolution is a light which illuminates all facts. Well, sorry, Pierre, you're lying. God's word is a light. Evolution is not a light. It destroys science. Hey, if a kid goes 12 to 16 years to school in your town, how's he going to view the world? Why would they lie and keep this in the books? Well, some people think that if everyone believes in evolution, it'll become true. You know, majority opinion. Some people think they must teach the lie to keep the paycheck coming in. Hey, if you go against evolution, you're likely to lose your job at a public school. Some people understand the bigger picture of how evolution is the formation, the foundation for the new world order. We cover lots more on that on part five. Why do they believe this? Well, some, that's all they've been taught. I spoke in Russia, and all they have over there are the same evidences for evolution that we use over here. That's all they're taught. There's a good book if you want to give to somebody who believes in evolution. Uh, it's called The Case Against Darwin. I've got one here on the table somewhere. Yeah, down there. That's a good uh, starter for those intelligent folks that just have time to read a short book. It's a real good one to get the message out. When I spoke in Russia, I spoke over there, and there were 30 professors in the room. I spoke for two hours on creation through a translator. After about an hour, one professor was crying. And I asked the interpreter, I said, uh, <clears throat> what's, he, what's he crying about? And she said, he's never heard the creation story. He didn't know there was one. He wants you to keep going. I got a missionary friend now that's begging for people to come to Africa. He said, would you please send people over here because they can get into public. He said, I can get into five or six or seven public schools every day where they ask us, would you please tell our kids how to get saved? Tell our kids the creation story. Please send somebody over here. A guy that I used to work with in Pensacola, been a missionary over there for years, just begging people to come. You can go to Russia tonight and they'll let you into public schools over there and preach the gospel to them. 
we got Americans more worried about that paycheck coming in over here. Why do they believe this? Well, some believe it because their job depends upon it. Some just simply hope there's no God to answer to. The Bible says they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, so God gave them up to a reprobate mind to believe those things which are not, do those things which are not convenient. The Bible says God will send them strong delusion. And if you believe you came from a rock, you're deluded. Seriously. Some people simply have too much, ri too much pride to admit they've been wrong. Okay, lies are in our textbooks. What do we do about it? Very simple. If you can, get your kids out. Private school, home school. Get them out if you can. If you can't, don't send your kids off unarmed because they're going to have corrupt stuff in their textbooks. Get them to know the truth. There are lots of practical things you can do. The Bible says we're the salt of the earth. Salt irritates. If nobody's irritated at you, you're probably not a good Christian. Okay, practical steps. Most teachers that I know are sincere, dedicated professionals. They are not the enemy. They're just simply teaching what they've been taught. Educate them. Teach them the truth. Teach all the kids the truth. See, we can reach everybody at the grassroots level. They can't stop that. Second level, educate all the teachers. Third level, change the textbooks. Fourth level, change the laws. Oh, while we're waiting for that, let's start at the bottom and let's just change all the people. They can't stop that one. Some people say teachers can't teach creation in public schools. That's a lie. They can teach creation in public schools. There are no laws against it. We cover all that at the beginning of tape number five. It's perfectly fine to teach creation in public schools. Satan's a liar. He's using this theory to draw your kids away from God and send them to hell. The Bible says, from the invisible things to the creation of the world is clearly seen. They are without excuse. If you're here, if you're watching this tape or listening to me speak, and you've accepted the evolution theory and rejected the creation, of God made this creation, the Bible says you are without excuse. All you got to do is look around and see there's evidence there was a designer. And he loves you, but he hates your sin. The Bible says God is angry with the wicked every day. You're going straight to hell the instant you die if you've, if you've not accepted Christ as your Savior. I deserve to go to hell. Whew, man, but I'm not going. I've been forgiven. You can have the same thing. If you're not sure you're going to heaven, nothing else matters, folks, because you're going to be dead for a long time. I'd encourage you to call out for God's mercy right now. Say, Lord, would you please forgive me and save me right now? The Bible promises, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans. Reach at Romans chapter 3, 23. Romans 6, 23. Romans 10, 13. God loves you. He wants you to come to heaven, but he hates your sin, and you're going to hell that quick if you don't have Christ in your life. If we can be any help, please feel free to give us a call. That's what, we, that's what our ministry exists for, to help people come to the Lord. Thank you for your attention tonight. Let's all stand, bow our heads, and close our eyes, and let's pray. We hope you've enjoyed this video series on creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. Much more important, though, than knowing all the truth and facts about science is to know the truth about whether you're going to heaven or not. If you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, uh, let me explain quickly what you need to do to go to heaven. The Bible says we're all sinners. We've all broken God's laws. We've disobeyed the Creator. We've, we've done wicked things. We're sinners. Some are worse than others, at least in man's eyes, but we've all broken God's laws. And the Bible says you have to repent. The word repent means to turn. It actually means two things, to turn from your sin and to turn to God. God's looking for a change in your attitude where you say, Lord, I don't want to do wrong anymore. I'm sorry, I've offended you. I want to do right. And you turn from sin and you turn to God and say, God, would you please forgive me? Would you save me? The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You need to admit you're a sinner. Number two, the Bible says in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. We deserve to die and go to hell because of our sin. But Jesus died for you. He loves you. He wants you to come to heaven. And anybody that will ask him for the free salvation, God will give you the gift of eternal life, it says in Romans 6, 23. It's a free gift. And it says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you would just call and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, would you please forgive me? And ask him. He will give you that free gift of eternal life. Why don't you just pray with me right now and you could receive Christ as your Savior. There's no magic words. God's looking at your heart. But if you could say this and mean it, God would forgive you. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, 
I know that I'm a sinner. I've broken your laws. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please apply your blood to my account. And forgive my sins and take me to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says, if you call upon the Lord, you shall be saved. So if you've asked the Lord to save you, He promised He'd save you. Now your job is to grow. Read your Bible, pray, get involved in a good Bible-believing church, and begin to grow to be a good Christian. Thank you so much. Call or write if we can be any help at all. We'd be glad to help.